connecting homestead to farmstead, barns to fields, to school, to neighbours, to church, from bakery to dairy, blacksmiths to wheelwrights, from spinney to copse to ancient forest, over headland, brook and bridge, along vales and valleys, passing mines and pits, skirting ponds and sacred mounds, leading ever on to our final resting places. Stitching together shelter, love, war, toil, heartache, prayer and death. The ancient English footpath. seventh decade treading these narrow ribbons of pounded earth, the highway of common men and women for thousands of years. My home village, recorded in Doomsday Book, was crisscrossed with footpaths, shortcuts, alleys, passages, jitties, lanes and backs, footways to next door, to the well, to factories, workshops, yards, allotment gardens, to sand and marl pits, to church, chapel, pubs and farms. And some paths threaded out of the village into the fields, finding their way across stile and brook to crab apple trees, rabbit warrens, fish ponds, rookeries, bramble patches and hedgerows heavy with slow and hazelnut, meadows that erupted mushrooms after warm rain. I grew up navigating this web of hard-packed soil, these little paths linking the lives of us and little people. And by the time I was 10 years of age, I'd explored for miles. These fieldways were alive with folk in the 1960s. Summer evening strollers, women in floral dresses and men in dark suits, the air heavy with pipe smoke. Lovers and labourers, peddlers of clothes pegs, knife sharpers, tramps, folk gathering flowers and fruits and stuff to feed domestic rabbits, lads bringing home the herd for milking. And for untold years, countless feet had already tramped along these green ways, writing on the face of the land the travels of the forgotten and nameless. Their legacy is a network of well over 100,000 miles of footpaths, bridle and byways in England, rights of way open to all. A few are recent creations, but many are historic. This way, Bronze Age women carried water, over there, the trail of Saxons, that way, Viking men herded cattle, along here, it is suggested, past the bloodied body of slain Richard III, slung across a horse's back on his route from Bosworth Field to Leicester. Perhaps here, angry commoners revolted, their once open lands enclosed in face of bloody resistance. And that way was dusty with honk of geese and bleat of sheep driven to market and fairs. And how many of these passers-by stripped seeds from stems and aided the travel of plants along the way? Today I walk for leisure, but on footways that were created out of necessity, a means to get from sleep to work, from work to the grave.
This is a tower mill built 230 years ago. My great-great-grandparents farmed nearby. Maybe they walked this way to speak to the miller. It last ground corn 106 years ago during the First War. Nearby are gin and bell pits, swellings and depressions in the ground where coal was mined since the 13th century. Little tracks and paths lead here from outlying villages. Young boys treading these ways day after day to crouch below ground cutting coal. Some never to come home. And here strode the saintly and holy. I wonder who crossed these waters to reach this Augustinian priory. To this day, some walkers say they have witnessed the White Lady, an apparition of a robed figure passing through these meadows. This path has been used for centuries, crossing the vale from my home village to what was once just a Saxon farmstead. This path was a footway out into the fields, once busy with men, women, children and horses working the land. And just a hundred years ago, shoe factory workers passed back and forth along here, an hour each way, spires of each village's church clear on the skyline. I was first brought this way nearly 60 years ago. My father wanted me to see a special tree, the 150 year old oak and ash. Legend has it that two lovers secretly met at a junction of footpaths. Their love was thwarted, but they sealed its memory by planting two seeds side by side, an acorn and an ash key. And the trees grew into a unique landmark, one trunk bearing the limbs and leaves of both oak and ash, a beauty spot and pause for walkers to marvel, a quite special tree for me. But, like from other paths across the English landscape, the view has changed. Only the oak remains standing. The bones of the ash lie all around. And further on, the path has changed too. And this is the sad fate of many a footpath, perhaps accidentally blocked by a fallen tree, or deliberately barred by a disgruntled landowner. Or like this one, hardly walked because no one has reason anymore to do so. And so, many paths have been reclaimed by the earth, enveloped in bramble and blackthorn, visible only to the curious, remembered by a few, walked by none. It is our duty to reopen these rites of way, to register them, to walk them, to keep them alive and used in memory of those whose lives created them, who beat iron, grubbed the land into little fields, drew coal and minerals up to the light, who staggered in full song made merry by too much ale, or hobbled in pain of agonising work, who cried and laughed and loved, went to war, to market, to town, to sea, down mines, or just down the hill at a run to announce a birth, or across the vale to meet a lover. It is our duty to walk here, to remember those who have gone before us. These paths are the only remains of their forgotten lives, lives that were lived on and at each end of little ribbons of beaten earth, the ancient English footpath.